Hello, welcome to this course. My name is Willi Linda. I'm teaching at the University College for Agrarian and Environmental Pedagogy in Vienna. My core topics are education for sustainable development, both in theory as well as practical. Today, I would like to share some ideas about sustainability. Sustainability, we all know the term, but we think of it in many different ways. For some, it's just another word for environmental protection. For others, it means that something is effective for a long time. Let's take a closer look. The word is a translation of the German term Nachhaltigkeit, and it is more than 300 years old. A forester, Karl von Karlowitz, traveled through Europe and saw that the forests everywhere were in a poor state. This was a serious problem, as wood was the most important source of energy, especially at the beginning of industrialization. Karlowitz wrote a book on how forestry should be practiced, not taking more wood from the forest then grows, planting anew for every one which was cut. He said, we will suffer hard times if we do not look after the forest in a sustainable way, the first time this word was mentioned. His book was a wake-up call. Laws were passed, bans were imposed, everywhere in Europe. Above all, however, coal replaced wood as an energy source. The problem seemed to be solved. Sustainability was forgotten. Everyone thought unlimited growth is possible. But about 50 years ago, this idea was shattered. The photo of our planet, seen from the moon, became a symbol of the fact that the Earth is limited and vulnerable, just like life on it. A team of scientists, the so-called Club of Rome, published a book entitled The Limits to Growth. It shook up the world. We must not go on wasting our resources. That was the message. Can I write? The United Nations commissioned a team of experts led by Gro Harlem Brundtland. She was a Norwegian doctor, became prime minister. Her job to compile a report called Our Common Future. It was published in 1987. This report takes up the concept of sustainability and places it in a center stage, but it also redefines it. In the report, sustainability is first and foremost fairness and justice. It asks for living in such a way that others can also live well today and in the future. A good life requires resources and an intact environment. It needs a material basis, the opportunity to earn an income, and it needs community, social cohesion. The three pillars of sustainability, economy, ecology, and social issues describe the basic dimensions of a good life. We add a good life is even more. It needs freedom and democracy. It needs the protection of human rights. Please keep in mind, the first concept of sustainability described something different. Back then, it was about conserving resources, the serfdom of peasants 
and the slave trade were not an issue. The inequality of estates was accepted as God-given. The Rundland, however, wanted to conserve resources in order to enable all people, including future generations, to lead a good life. We are talking about careful utilization, but also about fair distribution. Brundtland says, all humans have the same rights. That's what sustainability is all about. Five years later, in 1992, the Earth Summit took place in Rio, a unique gathering of representatives from all countries. It was about the environment and development. We must conserve resources, protect the rainforest, argued the countries of the global north. We need development to overcome hunger and poverty, said the countries of the global south. This debate continues. One of the results of this conference, the Agenda 21, a program of action to enable sustainable development worldwide, the program calls on the world's government to act in the interest of sustainable development. The summit created a spirit of optimism, but also raised many questions. What exactly is sustainability? What idea of justice is the concept based on? How can a transformation process succeed? Spirituality may also play an important role. It can give hope when no solution is recognizable. It can encourage us to become active even though our own contribution seems small. It can help us to remain confident even in the face of the impression that the world is coming apart at its seams and it can help us to recognize and accept our responsibility for the future of our planet. Much has been tried, developed and achieved since then. However, the spirit of optimism has faded and the trend towards sustainability has not been reversed. One problem the goals of the Agenda 21 remained vague and undefined. More than 20 years after Rio, in 2015, the United Nations took another important step. The 2030 Agenda, better known as the Sustainable Development Goals, was adopted. The idea of sustainable development is thematized again at the beginning. It's about the five P's, people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership. Sustainability is to be achieved by realizing 17 goals, including no poverty, gender equality, climate protection, protection of the oceans, peace and global partnerships. What is new? The goals have been concretized and put into figures. For example, in the case of health, halving the number of road deaths worldwide. Or in the case of sustainable consumption, reducing food waste by 50%. All goals are important. But they're difficult to harmonize. Economic growth should bring prosperity to people in disadvantaged reasons. But it's not easy to reconcile with climate protection. Therefore, it is not enough to set measures for individual goals. 
we must rather ask ourselves, how are the goals connected? For example, poverty has a lot to do with gender inequality. Women are much more at risk. Practically, every goal is related to each other. UNESCO states, we need systemic competences, which must be promoted and developed. And we are working on this at the university as a part of green pedagogy. Back to the goals. More than half of the time has passed. Even if the interim reports some successes, there is still a lot to do. Above all, this requires the courage to think in new directions, to launch new initiatives. It needs the courage to dare the future. Nothing less than a good life is at stake. Thank you for listening. Let's sum it up. Sustainable development is a concept for human development that aims to meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. It is about a good life. It is about fairness and justice between people living today and future generations. It needs an ethical foundation and human rights as a basis. And concrete fields of action are necessary. The 17 UN SDGs show that we need to take action in fighting against poverty and for climate protection, education and peace.